Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for you all to be here for another reading and book vlog. I want to bring you guys through a few random days off in my life and also update you about the books that I am currently reading. But I thought to make things exciting, I chose the books to read for this video based on cover aesthetic. Okay, so I actually want to make this a series on my channel where I read and compare different books that look similar. So like both this book, Kyland, and this book, Ink Blood Sisters Scribe, are two very purple, pink, pretty covers, but they're different genres. So I want to read books that have similar covers, but are vastly different genres and compare and contrast them. And I don't know, I just thought it would be fun. <laughs> okay, so the genres of these books, this book, Kyland, is a love story. And then this book, Ink Blood Sisters Scribe, is fantasy. I've actually already finished this book and I can't wait to talk to you guys about it, but I do have a few clips of me live reacting to it while I was reading it. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll those through. So I originally started reading this book, Kyland, in Pensacola, Florida, when I was there on a flight attendant layover. However, I was very distracted by the beach and the pool that I didn't actually end up doing a lot of reading. However, when I got back from this trip, I did take a flight to Pennsylvania to visit Eric and Luna and I read a lot on that flight and during my few days off there. Hi Luna. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. Look at that tail go. Look at the tail. Thump, 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 thump. It is so pretty here. I love the green and I just can't wait till this is my view every day. Right now, Eric is currently at his cousin's house fixing his Wi-Fi or something. So right now, it's just me and Luna hanging out reading this book. I am currently on page either 86 or 87 of this book. And you guys, I think already this is going to be a five-star read for me. This book is so good. It is so eye-opening and sad, but also heartwarming and just joyful. And I, it's, it's everything. This book is everything. I'm going to give you guys my favorite quote of the book so far. It's on page 51 and it says, I had dreamed of him staring into my eyes with the same wondrous expression he'd worn as he looked at the sunset. Like that is just beautiful. The writing in this book is so poetic and pretty and beautiful and I just cannot get enough of it. I think another reason why I have loved this book so much actually has to do with something that the author Mia Sheridan shared on her Instagram page. She said that her message to readers of her romance novels are that everyone deserves a love story. Everyone, no exceptions. Your station in life doesn't determine how epic or beautiful or inspiring your love story will be. It doesn't matter if you're a billionaire or a coal miner, a famous athlete or a store clerk, and often the most beautiful love stories are those between two people who have nothing but their bared hearts to offer one another and a hundred sacrifices both big and small and I just thought that was so beautiful what she said and it has really stuck with me. Okay, I think one of the reasons why I am falling in love with this book is because the characters' lives are really sad. Like, they're really, really hard. They are dirt poor, have hardly enough money to eat any food. Both of their mothers are very mentally ill, and it's putting a lot of strain on the kids. And so, like, just the kids have very, very, very hard lives in this story, but they are forming a friendship together, and they're finding joy and love and just good things in each other and that is so heartwarming to read about like they're having so much struggle go on in their lives but they're just finding the little moments of joy in each other oh my gosh this is just this book is really pulling at my heartstrings. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that this book is really reminding me to be grateful for what I do have and to enjoy all of the even little small moments in life that bring me joy and good things. It's not very often that you come across such a special book like this one. And it has been a really long time since I've had these types of feelings while reading a book, probably since I read Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. This book just sucked me in. It is poetic, it is beautiful, it has themes of sacrifice and love. The writing in this book is just 
stunning. And so I want to read you guys just a little bit. So page 119, it says, um, the fight to live would humble you in ways you didn't ever want anybody else to know about. Sometimes it was ugly and shameful and beautiful and courageous all at once. There's a quote on page 120 that sums up how I feel about this entire book. It says, until that moment, I didn't know my heart could be filled with awe and grief, joy and sorrow all at the same time. And that's how I feel about this book. And absolutely five out of five stars. One of the best books I've read this year. And I would honestly say that anybody over the age of 17 could probably read this book. 17 and older could read this book. I am currently at my apartment pool. And you guys, I'm adding a bonus book to today's video because I saw this book go viral on TikTok and it just sounded so intriguing to me that I had to immediately read it. I started reading this book yesterday and I'm already halfway done with it. I think I'll finish it today. It's called Pen Pal. I was told that this book gives the same vibes as Verity and I loved that book by Colleen Hoover. So yeah, I was immediately sold. Okay, so the description of this book is the first letter arrived the day my husband was buried. It was postmarked from the state penitentiary and contained a single sentence. I'll wait forever if I have to. It was signed by Dante, a man I didn't know. Out of simple curiosity, I wrote back to him to ask him what exactly he was waiting for. His reply, you. I told the mystery man he had the wrong girl. He said he didn't. I said we'd never met, but he said I was wrong. We went back and forth, exchanging letters every week that grew increasingly more intimate. Then one day the letter stopped. When I found out why, it was already too late. Dante was at my doorstep and nothing on earth could have prepared me for what happened next. The cover of this book totally gives me the ick. I hate when there are actual human faces and like human bodies on <laughs> book covers. I prefer my covers to be much more mysterious. I think it's really cringy and I just don't really like it, but the book is so good so far. I could definitely see how this book could be turned into a TV show or a movie because it is so spooky. Honestly, I can't tell if it's a romance, a thriller, or a horror book. I think it's all three. This book is so spooky and unlike anything that I have ever, ever read before. I would also say though that this book should be read by only people probably aged 18 and over just because it does have some mature content to it. But wow, it is keeping me on the edge of my seat and I will probably finish it today because I just have to know how this ends. All right, you guys, so I finished Pen Pal last night and wow, oh, there's a fly buzzing around, but what a crazy book. Normally in thrillers towards the end, I can kind of tell what might happen, but this book, oh my gosh, there was no way I could have guessed how it was all going to end and come together. Incredible, five out of five stars, you guys. I can't believe that we've had two five-star books back to back. It's not that the writing was amazing, but just the way that the book made me feel, like it got my heart pumping. It made me nervous. I couldn't put it down. I genuinely felt scared at times while reading it. And just, I don't know, the fact that it could do all of that and I wasn't suspecting the ending at all. Amazing. Five stars. So now I am really excited to start this book, Inkblood Sister Scribe. I don't really know anything about this book, but it just says in this spellbinding um, debut novel, Two estranged half-sisters tasked with guarding their family's library of magical books must work together to unravel a deadly secret at the heart of their collection, a tale of familial loyalty and betrayal in the pursuit of magic and power. So this is a fantasy book and I think I'm gonna put my bathing suit on again and head outside to start reading. It's the next day. I'm actually in Utah right now visiting my sister and we went on a gorgeous hike this morning. Let me show you guys some clips. My sister actually had to go into work for a few hours. But right now I'm just hanging out with her dog, Kira. You wanna say hello? So it's just me watching Miss Kira 
but let's talk about books. Okay, so this book, Ink Blood Sister Scribe, I took the cover off. I'm gonna DNF it for now. This doesn't mean that I won't read it in the future. It just means that I'm not in the mood to read it right now. I read maybe the first 30 or so pages and I just cannot get into this book. I don't know why I'm just not connecting with any of the characters. It's also written in third person, which is fine, but I personally prefer books written in first person with dual point of view. That's just what I like, but that doesn't mean that you wouldn't love this book and that this wouldn't be a great book for you. I just feel like if I force myself to read something that I'm not thoroughly enjoying, it's gonna put me in a book slump. There are way too many books out there to read something that you're not 100% enjoying. So I'm not going to get rid of this book quite yet. Like I'm not gonna donate it. I'm not gonna give it away to a friend quite yet. I'm gonna give it some time, read some other books, and then maybe pick this one up again and see if I like it. With that said, I did download a book onto my Kindle. Well, really this is my iPad, but I have my Kindle app on here. And so I downloaded The War of Two Queens and I have been waiting to read this book because I've read the first three in the series from Blood and Ash, A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, and The Crown of Gilded Bones. And I'm loving this fantasy series so far, but I am waiting to read the fourth book because the author is releasing the fifth book at the end of July, which is right after my birthday. So I kind of wanted to, at the beginning of the month, read the fourth book and then I can wait a few weeks and then it will be my birthday and then it's like a birthday present when she's released the new book and that way the characters are fresh in my mind too. So I'm really excited to dive into this book and that is what I'm going to be reading over the next few days. Isn't the cover so pretty too? Oh, it went small. I love the covers of these books. Anyway, that is probably going to be it for today's video. But if you have read any of the books that I mentioned in today's video, let me know what you thought of them in the comment section below because I would love to hear your thoughts on these books. And yeah, so thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe because I would love to see you in future videos. I hope that you all are having a fabulous day and I'll see you next time. Bye.